This is Oscar Paul with James Connor. How are you, James? I'm doing good, thank you. Great. We thought we'd do a, a one-off subject today because it's sort of been floating around. Some new studies been floating around the last month or two in Science Magazine and others about the plight of the Caucasian male in the United States. Very interesting the thing is occurring where for the first time the lifespans of the Caucasian male is dropping. Um, and th there was many articles that were saying the despair of the white male is one of the major causes of this as well as economic, legal, and other things that are basically uh, causing huge problems for this uh, section of the population. And interestingly enough, the same thing is not occurring with any other uh, male uh, to the same degree in society. And women are, are continuing to have their lifespans increase and all that other good stuff. The analogy here, James, would be, if everybody remembers, when the Soviet Union collapsed, very interesting thing occurred, but had one uh, major cause that, according to the media, was vodka and the the males in Russia, their, their lifespans dropped into the 50s. Uh, and now it's been recovering lately, but you know the despair and the alcoholism had a huge effect on the lifespans. Anyway, I think we should talk about this. I want your thoughts first and what you think is causing this, James, the, the horrible situation for the white Caucasian males, specifically the ones that don't go to college and are a little bit more lower middle class or even poor. Well, so one thing that's very interesting about all this is it coincides with a, a sharp uptick of people ODing. And, of course, it's a little bit related, but there's just an enormous uptick in the number of people that are ODing. I think it was about 10,000 a year in the 70s, and now it's something like 60,000 a year. I think more people are ODing. Uh, and this is mostly whites, and it tends to be white males and more people are dying from drug overdoses than car accidents. It's some amazing point in history. And so there is a problem with drug addiction, but it's more than that. The reason people are turning to drugs, okay, that might be that they're getting pushed on uh, America by Mexican gangs. There's, there's a lot of that. It's a, it's a particular phenomena. But yeah, people are getting screwed. I mean, these people in America, they there's there's constant affirmative action, not just for minorities, but also for women. And there's all these elements of things that have changed. Uh, men have kind of lost their role to such an extent. They're no longer the breadwinners. In many cases, they're no longer able to even provide an income or to raise children. Yes, James. And so you're, you've hit on some of the main points and I wanted your opinion, but you know, the main things that are really, really affecting this segment of the population is let's look at it. One, um, they're not allowed to be males anymore with the political correctness. Uh, when they go off to school, they get in trouble or they get put on drugs like Adderall a riddle in early in life. If I had gone to school, say, uh, you know, in the nineties, I would have, I was a, you know, troublemaking kid had a good time. I was being a male. I would have been put on like probably two or three different kinds of drugs. So from the beginning, they're drugged in school. They're not allowed to be male. They get in trouble for acting like boys. Then on top of that, uh, they, basically get disheartened about all this stuff. They don't do as well as the females. So what's happened to the college population? It is now almost 60% women to 40 or so, maybe 41, 42% males. So they're now even, even though college is a horrible ripoff and brainwashing situation, the fact is you kind of need a college degree to get a decent job for most people in, in, in the United States. So they're not going to college anymore. Yet when they go out to go look for that skilled trade job or the manufacturing job that's been shipped overseas as it all was in the 80s and 90s to China. So there's no factories, 
no higher education leading to higher education jobs. They're not allowed to be boys when they're boys. They're not allowed to be men. So they're in this this situation. Then on top of that, if they get happen to get married, uh, and a lot of them are not getting married now, um, the court system takes their kids away. 90 plus percent of the time it's awarded to the women and then they have to pay alimony much more than women although sometimes you hear you know blue moon woman playing alimony the court systems the laws are completely working against uh the white male in this case if he's divorced in fact for all males not just white males there so there's so many things working against it and then on top of all that this fourth way third and fourth way feminism has made the enemy of the state of women white male. They're the target practice. They're constantly being made fun of. You're not allowed to walk around being a white male. You're disparaged in every single category, every everything. It's okay to rip, insult, uh, take away their safe spaces, call them all kinds of names, only to a white male. That's the only politically correct person that you can attack. And an example is that, the poor uh, young kid who, who died after being in jail in North Korea, there was articles in the Huffington Post, I believe, and possibly even Slate, who said, well, you know, this is typical of, you know, uh, the attitude of a white male. And he basically is saying he deserved it, deserved to die because he, you know, pulled the poster down. So I just think under all fronts, the male and especially the white male is under attack and with your points, James, almost like the crack addiction in the 80s with the African-Americans, where it was discovered and written about many times, and he, proved, he was proven to be right. Jerry Webb's series of articles in the San Jose Mercury News which basically said the CIA is bringing in crack cocaine and dropping into the inner city, especially L.A. Anyway, uh, he turned out to be right after he died. And I would almost suggest, if I was a conspiracy nut, that these oxycotton-type opiates, which are made by pharmaceuticals, are directly, perfectly oriented toward the, uh, the, the particularly the white Caucasian male, and is basically killing him off on top of everything else: alcoholism, despair, no job poverty and everything else. So not to go on the diatribe, but this is a very tough subject and it's the first time it's ever happened in a modern Western country. I'm not talking about Soviet Union. I don't want to call them modern, but in modern Western country where the lifespans are dropping for the first time in 150 years. This is incredible. And these are some of the points causing it. What do you think, James? So, you know, I guess it, a lot of what you're saying is right, and you get into this situation about, well, does that just sound like crying over spilt milk? Why don't they just, you know, get buck up, get it together? But is there, you know, you have to wonder, is there a little bit of this by design? Are there people who want to change America in a way to, let's say, weaken some of the pillars of strength, you know, essentially the white Caucasian is, is, is the man who built America. I mean, there was help from other directions, but essentially that was the, that was the, the core of strength of America. And so people who would wish to, to weaken the white male in America, maybe it's an attempt to weaken America all around. And, yeah, the CIA could be involved with the drug pushing, but you know they don't have to be directly involved with it. They can turn a blind eye to uh, Mexican gangs. They can not enforce border patrols. And then there's this whole question about, you know, even this this issue of the war on drugs. Does that uh, is that effective? They have marketing. They have big pharma. There's a lot of collusion on the different levels, and it and it can be just disastrous. Or it could be nefarious. And I think that's a bit of a question. Is this, is this just something we're seeing historically that you, you look at and you go, oh, well, that's too bad that it's happening? Or is it, is it collusion? Is it, is it des by design? Yeah, we don't have proof right now that the pharmaceutical companies are working with some nefarious group to target 
you know, populations, specifically maybe the white male. But we do have some evidence from Gary Webb, and even, I'm going to say it, see, I admitted it was true in, in some weird FOIA documents, but uh, that, that they were involved in that trade. Now, that may have been just because they were trying to get some money for some black ops. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. But if you look at the things that have really hurt the family and the head of the family, and in the case of America, it was majority white still is for quite some time. Uh, well, if you attack the family and you attack the male, make him less empowered, then the, the family unit's gone and all the children and the rest of the family and the wives and the, and the females, their savior now or their caregiver is Mr. Government, Mr. Uncle Sam. So you can go back and look, and maybe we need to do a, a you know a podcast on this about the beginnings of feminism and what it, how it was started, and why it was started or pushed along. And that is very interesting subject, very tough for our lovely female friends to hear sometimes, but very true and provable on some very factual books, evidence, and FOIA docs that have come out. So we would have to look at feminism. We'd have to look at uh, is the FDA and the pharmaceuticals and the government in some way allowing these op this opiate uh, epidemic to, to, go, to get out of control? What happened to the court system? Well, that's part of feminism. The court swayed to you know empowering women and taking kids away from men. And making them pay all money. So I would say that if you can prove that feminism and a few other subjects were sort of directed or helped along, then you have an answer there. And uh, maybe that's for another time, James. But I do think feminism has very much damaged not just males, but but females, because it makes uh, it makes um, females have to choose, and they're told do career, do career. And some of them want to be mothers and be other things, and. You know, they find next thing they know that they can't have kids anymore and they have to hold a job with their partner to even uh, pay for, you know, half of the kid's expense. So I would suggest that if we look into feminism, if we look into a few other things, we'll find out some some very, very uh, uh, troubled, so troubled pieces of data that suggest it was targeted to disrupting the family and by proxy the the male and specifically the majority of males which were white males so in a way uh i i think those are all kind of reasonable theses but where do you go if you are trying to roll some of this back if you're trying to change the situation is it as simple as getting uh people employed is it is, is it a question of bringing manufacturing back is it a question of building a wall to keep out mexican drug gangs or let's say confronting big pharma in some way and and then what's even possible i mean i don't think you're like a big church goer but do you think the the fact that the the church is no longer present in our communities that makes a difference like so i i think i'm agreeing with much of what you're saying and so we're observing this but you as a practical person where would you see room for change well, I, you know, you have to do small steps. This is an incredibly huge issue that would require maybe a generation to even somewhat reverse. One, I think an, a straight up single answer is you do not put kids on Adderall and Ritalin because they act like boys. So first start with the little kids, which is no, we're not doing this unless it's a severe case where the kid's violent, then we have to hospitalize them or something like that. But you don't take, it's an extraordinary amount of kids, specifically boys, are being drugged from age three on. I have friends, I had three year olds, and they said, if you want your kid to continue in kindergarten, they have to, you, you need to go get these prescription drugs and go see a psychiatrist and get this stuff. I mean, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. So there's a good place to start. Then we need to, when I say we, I think women have been misled as much as men. And I think women, and there's some interesting new surveys on this, that they're incredibly unhappy more than any other time in, you know, the last 50 years. 
And that's, you know, of course, we never know how accurate these surveys are, but there's a, there's quite a few of them. So we need to say, hey, look, it's okay to be a mother. It's okay to raise your kids. It's, it's an extraordinary thing. And basically say, you know, uh, maybe you, you want to try this. You don't necessarily have to do the career, although now you need two jobs to even pay for things. But we sort of have to start reeling in. They're feeling it now. Women can't find men to marry. They can't find the men are dropping out of marriage, of careers. They're, they're looking at themselves and getting angry. Like, where are the good men? Where is this? Well, maybe we can reel them in with some, some thinking that, look, the males are kind of beaten down a little bit right now. Here's what's hurting them. Maybe you guys want to help. So we have to educate people. And then, you know, until you get a hold of the government policies in a way, which basically really hurts the men in the legal system where, you know, they're, they're, they're really hurt in alimony, divorce cases, you know, and, and, and uh, keeping their children. That can be done, too. That can be done almost at the local state level because a lot of these are state laws. So you probably have to prove a pretty good state and start there, and then the word spreads. So it's a very slow process. There's three things to start. But, yes, this is a huge undertaking to completely reverse this aircraft carrier, turn it around, and try to get to go down a different river here. But I think you'll find that women know something's wrong, and if you – if we educate them and also if they, we know that our kids are getting drugged completely in a ridiculous way, we need to stop that. I think those are two or three places to start, James. I don't have all the answers, but I think that's a good place to start. So one of the best things about America is that it's 50 states with seemingly, seemingly different laws and approaches, and it allows for incredible A-B testing. So some of the things you say sound correct. This this whole this whole legal juggernaut of when you have a society where divorce is common, what do you do about the kids? Because now we have this situation. At least in California, when I was there, I had the impression it was a yeah something like eighty or ninety percent of divorces were initiated by women. Maybe they had good reasons or not, but that's just a reality. And then they tend to get the kids and get the alimony. So what do you do? I mean, that is an incredibly disheartening situation for men. And yet, it's difficult to know what the um, solution is. Should should men have more access? Should they get the should they get the children? How do you deal with alimony issues? Uh, I'm not really sure. But it seems like they'd have to um, experiment quite a bit. And having so many different states, there should be more room for that. I have the impression that things have been getting more uniform and uniformly more difficult for men. I'd, I'd also like to say that there's, there is this element that, yeah, this beating back socialism is in many ways maybe also indirectly what you need to improve the situation for men because the more socialized the system is, it seems that it it, it creates a a lack of reliance. Uh, couples, they don't stay together. The family structure kind of dissolves. It's like you're always helping people out, but no one really gets helped out. They get helped out short term. You know, they're out of work. You you send them some money. Um, you help pay for their apartment. You do these things, and you just have this kind of gradual disintegration of the society. Something like this is also, I think, happening in Europe. But it seems like it's very extreme in the U.S. And, and maybe everything is more extreme in the U.S. You, you know, people do – it seems like they drink more. They are more entrepreneurial. They take more risk. They maybe do more drugs. And I always see the contrast when I go back and forth. And maybe this is just another manifestation of that uh, kind of extreme character of, of, of America with freedom but maybe also with this downside. Uh, James, very good points. And, you know, you know, talking to your – about your divorce point, the highest percentage of suicides per, you know, per uh, segment of society is white males after divorce. That's the biggest suicide rate. And so, su you know, divorce just destroys men financially and otherwise. And when did this all start? Well, they started this thing called no-fault divorce. I don't know which state started first, but you're right. 
one state starts and then the rest follow. So then, you know, the society, the culture sits there and says, oh, you know, marriage is, you know, passe and you can have a great life. You know, even though you have kids, you can go do all these things. And then they go watch all these ridiculous shows. Next thing you know, uh, people feel dissatisfied in their marriage. And you are absolutely correct. It's about 70 percent or more of marriages or divorces are initiated by women. And, you know, maybe their husband's, uh, you know, an okay guy, but he's boring. But the television show that everybody sees, sees an exciting life. So the whole thing from the, from the means, from the, you know, the media to the laws, which make it no fault, which is anybody can divorce for any reason, doesn't have to, doesn't matter. And all these things have worked against the family because it's not just the white males that are getting destroyed. It is the families and the children that are getting destroyed. And, it, and the other thing is it's okay to rip apart, make fun of um, white males only. Those are the only people that can be made fun of, called all kinds of names. And on top of all that, women are still marching around from Clinton on. Women don't have equal rights and equal pay and they're abused and they this and that. And it's just not true. The data shows that the only reason that there's an income inequality is because some women choose to stop working. They, they work less overtime. Some of them go have, you know, go become mothers. And so they've managed to manipulate that data to look like, you know, that men make more money. When in fact, if you take job to job at the same age, they make the same. In fact, out of college, women are making a little bit more because of all the affirmative action. The women are getting better jobs because they need women in those particular jobs to you know, put a woman in the position. So across the board, there's so many things working against men, specifically white men. And by the way, African-Americans have completely – that could be a whole other podcast. But we're, we're talking about white males today. They are under attack and they have been for a long time and there's no let up. And we're still being told that we have white male privilege and all this other stuff. When in fact, the suicide rates, the poverty, the despair and the lifespans show that they are worse off than women at this point And something needs to change or women are all going to be looking around the last few men. Uh, and uh, get into, you know, some situation where, you know, there's not enough men for the women that are acceptable to them. So I, I think we have huge issues here. I think we should also talk about one day about feminism and exactly what you said, James. Feminism was very much a part of communism, and we can go into that in another podcast, to destroy and export communism and destroy the society so that they could have communism. So it's right there from all the main leaders of feminism and where they came from and what they believed. And we can probably talk about that another time. Yeah. Okay. So I know you're coming up against a uh, break. You have a call coming up. So let's end it on that note. And we can like, dig a little bit more at this um, again, another time, you know, I, I think a, a point also for the future is that I meet so many uh, women and men who say they would like to have a family, but for various reasons it doesn't gel. I find that oftentimes the women are very liberal in their outlook and the men are often more conservative and you just wonder how are they going to they match their expectations. It, it's there's There's kind of a, a setup that's designed to fail in yeah is it is it designed that way on intentionally or is this just something that's evolved and it's a little bit out of control and how do we reel it back in of course but yeah james we can we can get at it later but you know women are victims of this too they're convinced and told be career 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 when in fact many of these women want to be you know mothers too and then they wait till late then they can't have kids. And then their expectations are that, you know, Tarzan with a brain is going to show up and be their, you know, the, their savior at 41 years old or 38 years old. And it just isn't the case. So these women are just completely victims of this ridiculous cultural push to make women no careers and all this stuff. And you're victims, you're victims, you're victims to these women. They tell them they're victims. And so they feel justified and all their stuff. And then they wait around. Next thing you know, it's too late to have a family. 
And that's one reason why our populations are dropping among the, you know, native, not Native American, but native, you know, European populations in the United States and in Europe. Yeah. So, all right. Well, good. So we'll come back to this again further. All right. Good talking, Oscar. Thank you, James.